Today I want to talk about three of my favorite affordable lenses for the Canon R8, and they also happen to be pretty much the only three lenses I use with this camera. And so no matter what type of lens you need, there's probably going to be a perfect option for you in this list. And like always, I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to jump right into this video, but if it does help you out, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to my channel. Now, if you do want to purchase any of these lenses or any of my favorite accessories or the R8 itself, I'll have everything linked right down in the description. But without further ado, let's get into my top three lenses for the Canon R8. All right, this right here is the Canon RF 16 mm f2.8. Now, the first thing you can probably see is how tiny this lens is. This lens literally fits right in the palm of my hand, and on the R8 itself, you barely even notice the weight and size of this lens. So let me go ahead and put this on right here. And you can just see this honestly fits perfect with how small and light the Canon R8 is on its own. And so a 16 mm f2.8 lens on a full frame camera is gonna give you an ultra wide field of view, which is gonna be perfect for any type of vlogging, landscapes, interiors, or really any type of ultra wide photos and videos that you need to get. Now, if you're not super familiar with the difference between full frame and APS-C, and you know, the differences in focal lengths, the easiest way to explain this is this 16 mm lens is going to give you a similar field of view to the 0.5 lens on your iPhone. Or if you don't have an iPhone, just the ultra wide lens on a cell phone is going to be a similar field of view to this. And also, like I mentioned, being an f2.8 aperture, this is going to be really good in low light conditions. So if you're taking videos or photos at night, this is going to be really good to be able to open that up to f2.8. That'll allow you to let in a ton of light so you can keep your ISO as low as possible. And it's really going to allow you to get better, cleaner, sharper looking photos in darker and low light scenarios, as well as helping to separate your foreground and your subject from your background. And especially if you're vlogging or taking selfies, you're really going to be able to separate yourself from your background. It's going to look a little bit more professional than just blogging with like a cell phone or something like that. And now when it comes to sharpness, this lens is really, really tack sharp right in the center, which of course that's gonna be mostly where your subject is gonna be at, right in the center of your image. However, once you kind of go out more towards the corners and edges of the RF 16 millimeter, it's really gonna soften up that image a little bit. You're gonna have a little bit of vignetting in the corners, a little bit of distortion, especially towards the edges and corners. And like I said, that sharpness fall off is gonna be pretty extreme, especially right towards the very edges. And so you're really gonna wanna keep your subject as close as you can to, you know, the center area of the image. I really don't want to take away from the fact that this is just an awesome bang for the buck lens. You're really getting a ton of lens for the $250 to $300 price point. However, I do want to mention just a few more cons that could possibly be deal breakers for you depending on what you want to use this lens for. So first of all, the autofocus is just a little bit sluggish with this lens, you know, especially in comparison to other higher end RF lenses that I've used. You know, sometimes it'll be tracking a subject and it'll just, it'll just kind of lag behind a little bit, you know, if it's moving kind of fast or if it's switching between the frame a lot, which again, plays into the fact that this is a really budget lens, especially for what you're getting, you know, an ultra wide F 2.8 lens like this for a full frame camera. You're getting such a good bang for the buck with this lens already that you can kind of tell Canon just had to dial back probably to save money with it. But to be honest, for what I've used this for, I've always been able to work around it. And you know, it might take a little longer, but I'm always able to get focused and get the shots that I need with it. But it is just something to keep in mind, just in case that's more important to you. Now, I guess I kind of mentioned some of the other cons I had on this list, like it does have some vignetting issues. It does have some, you know, distortion and some sharpness fall off towards the edges and corners. There's no stabilization in this lens, which means you're gonna get slightly shaky video. Again, that's not a very big issue for me personally, and especially since this is an ultra wide lens, you're not gonna get as shaky looking video as you would with something like a 70 to 200 millimeter lens or something that's a lot more zoomed in, where you're gonna be able to see those jitters a lot more. But it is just something I figured I'd mention. And then last, the buttons and switches on this lens are a little bit limited. So this does have a control ring, which is awesome. Every single RF lens has a control ring, which is essentially this programmable ring. You can go into the menus and change what it does. You can have it change your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, and a bunch of other things, which is really useful. However, on a lot of budget RF lenses, Canon actually combines the control ring with the focus ring, which means there's the switch on the side here where it can switch this ring between a control ring and a focus ring. Again, this is another kind of specific concept but this is something that I've had some issues with. It just adds a bunch of time having to, you know, switch between manual and autofocus in the menu because there isn't a manual autofocus switch. And then if I have the control ring set to something that I use all the time, 
but also want to use manual focus. I have to use the switch to switch back and forth between those and remember what it said at the time, rather than just a normal lens where you have a dedicated focus ring that's just always your focus. It's just gonna make things a little bit confusing, but this is just another thing that Canon probably had to remove to save money on this lens. And I personally think it's worth it to be able to have this ultra wide F2.8 full frame lens at such a price point. But now let's move on to the next lens, which in my opinion is the perfect first lens for anybody that just has the kit lens or is just looking to purchase the Canon R8. I think this next lens is the perfect first lens for pretty much anybody. All right, this right here is the Canon RF 50 millimeter F1.8. And so this is the classic nifty 50 for the Canon RF mount. This is gonna be a perfect lens for portraits, for any standard field of view photography and videos, and for really getting that razor thin depth of field and really separating your subject from your foreground and your background and getting those really crisp portrait looking shots. And so the first thing you notice again is just how small and light this lens is and just how well it pairs with the tiny Canon R8. I mean, this lens really couldn't fit it any better. You barely notice the weight of it on the R8 and it pretty much just pairs perfectly with one of the smallest and lightest full frame cameras. It's pretty much the most standard focal length and one of the most recommended first lenses for anybody because of its standard focal length as well as just how cheap this lens is. So this is the most affordable lens Canon sells for the RF mount. If you just have the Canon R8 with no lenses or are planning on purchasing the R8, or if you just have the kit lens with it and are looking for your next lens to purchase, you really cannot go wrong with the 50 millimeter f1.8. It's honestly such a simple lens and I've covered this lens so many times on my channel that you know there really isn't much to say about it. It's just a great lens to use. It's small, it's light, it's sharp enough. It gives you that really razor thin depth of field and that's pretty much all you can ask for with you know a $200 nifty 50 like this. However, there are some cons I wanna mention with this lens. These probably aren't gonna be deal breakers but I do wanna mention them just in case they are for you. So first of all, I want to mention this lens definitely isn't tack sharp anywhere in the image, you know, even dead center in the image. Now I can almost guarantee you won't or you'll barely notice this at all unless you really, really crop into your images. Now also going off of that, it does have a little bit of a chromatic aberration issue, especially if your f-stop is wide open at f1.8 or all the way even down to like f2.8. You're gonna notice chromatic aberrations, especially if there's a lot of contrast in your images and a lot of like, you know, light flaring or really just bright areas. But again, most of the time, if you just take a photo with this, you post it on social media, or you look at it on your phone or your laptop or something like that, it really doesn't take away that much from the image itself. And so in my opinion, those things just aren't much of an issue. If you really can't have those things, you're just gonna have to know that you're gonna probably spend 10 times as much as this lens. Now also the autofocus with this lens, especially in video I've noticed, is just a little bit sluggish. It just kind of struggles tracking subjects. It'll kind of take a second to rack focus and to really get to what you wanna record. But again, I use this lens all the time. This is definitely my most used lens with the Canon R8. And I just don't really think about it that much or really find that much of an issue with it. But it is something that every once in a while, it'll definitely affect you know the shot that I'm trying to take. And so for that reason, I do wanna mention that in this video. And really the last con to mention, which is similar to the RF 16 millimeter lens, this lens doesn't have a dedicated focus ring and a control ring. They are combined in just one ring on this lens. But there we go, that's it for some of the pros and cons of the RF 50 millimeter F1.8. I'm sure you've seen a ton of photo and video examples by now. It's really hard to beat the price to performance ratio of the 50 millimeter F1.8. All right, this is the Canon RF 100 to 400 millimeter F5.6 to F8. I've used this for well over a year with my Canon R50, gotten some awesome photos. I mean, this is overall one of my favorite and most used RF lenses in general, and especially with the full frame Canon R8, this is such a powerful lens and definitely worth, you know, the extra size and weight you're gonna get, especially paired with the Canon R8. And so like I said, this is a 100 to 400 millimeter lens, which means this is gonna be a really, really long focal length for getting those, you know, wildlife shots, those super close up portraits, bird photography or videos, anything like that. Anything that you need just an extremely long focal length, the RF 100 to 400 is perfect for that. And so right off the bat, you can see this is definitely a pretty big lens when you pair it up with the Canon R8. For a 100 to 400 millimeter full frame lens with image stabilization, this lens is honestly really small and light in comparison 
to similar types of lenses. Now, if you've owned 70 to 200 lenses or even other 100 to 400 lenses in the past, you definitely know what I'm talking about. At the size and weight of this thing, it is super, super compact for what you're getting. And especially when you consider how sharp and just how good the performance of this lens is. Like when you think about that, this isn't an L-series lens, it's not one of Canon's highest end series lenses, and it's at a really budget price point for what it is. This lens is so sharp and it just really overperforms for what you'd expect from this price point. And pretty much all the other technical aspects, the autofocus is extremely fast with this, really, really fast. It has Canon's fast USM autofocus motors, which are typically saved for Canon's high-end L-series lenses. It also has image stabilization, so you're getting really smooth photos, really smooth videos, which is very important at a 100 to 400 millimeter focal length. And in general, this lens feels really good. It's not made of metal or anything like that, but it is made of pretty high quality plastic. But I wouldn't recommend really tossing this thing around a bunch. It's not gonna be, you know, as high of a build quality, like I said, as L-series lenses. But I do just wanna bring up a few things to know before you purchase this lens. First of all, the aperture being f5.6 to f8 is gonna really limit two things. The first thing being low light photos. If you go outside to take photos at night with this lens, or if you're in an indoor darker scenario, you are really, really gonna struggle getting a usable image with this. You're gonna have to bump up your ISO a ton to get you know, a normal exposure with this. And in general, if you're in a darker scenario, just the photos and videos are gonna look a lot more muddy. They're gonna be a lot grainier because you have to bump up your ISO. And sometimes it will just be completely unusable if you're in a really dark area. Now that slow aperture is also gonna mean you're sometimes gonna struggle to get really good background separation and get that shallow depth of field that you might typically want to get with wildlife photography and wildlife videos. That's another thing that with this really slow aperture being f5.6 to f8, you're going to kind of struggle to get that background separation. If you're looking for a telephoto lens for the R8 that's gonna give you really good sharp photos and videos that's stabilized and especially one that's under a thousand dollars, this is pretty much the option for you. So there we go, that wraps up my three favorite lenses for the Canon R8. I hope this video helped you out, and if it did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. Also, every single photo you saw in this video was edited with my Essentials Lightroom preset pack, which is on sale right now for only $5. If you edit your photos in Adobe Lightroom and really wanna speed up your workflow, go check that out down in the description. Like I said, it's only $5 right now. And there's pretty much a preset in that pack that'll cover any type of photos you wanna take. But either way, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.